In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to draw a horse with graphite. In this lesson, I'll be working on smooth bristle paper, and I'll be using my Stadler mechanical pencil with HB graphite and 2B graphite. I'll also use a kneaded eraser and a vinyl or plastic eraser. We'll begin by loosely sketching out the contours of the horse on the bristle paper using an HB graphite. At the beginning stages, we'll work loosely and draw predominantly with straighter lines, even though most of the horse is curved. We'll also pay special attention to the overall shapes that the horse is made up of, and we'll try to break our contours down into these basic shapes. So even though we're drawing contour lines, we're still focused on the shapes that we see on the horse. In order to create lighter marks at this beginning stage, we'll hold the pencil lower down on the shaft. This will prevent added pressure from producing darker lines that may mar our final result. We also want to be careful that we don't apply too much pressure producing grooves in the surface of the paper. These grooves prevent subsequent applications of graphite from being filled in, which will create lighter marks in areas of darker shadow. Once we become more confident with the looser contours that we have on the surface, we can apply a bit more pressure on the pencil defining the outlines of the horse. And now that we have the basic shape of the horse in place, we can concentrate on the subtle changes of line that occur with the contour. Now we want to make sure that our lines are not too strong when we begin adding the value. So before we start developing the shadow and the tone, we'll gently lift the lines that we've created with a kneaded eraser. This produces a line that's still strong enough to be visible, but not so overpowering. We can now begin developing the tone and value on the horse. We'll start with an HP pencil. In fact, most of our applications throughout this process will be done with the HP graphite. Developing the tone or value on the horse is a slow and meticulous process. It's important to be patient throughout this process. We'll start with lighter applications and progressively get darker as we go. It's much easier to make a value darker if need be than try to make it lighter if we accidentally make it too dark too early. We know in this case, however, that the eyes of the horse will be very dark. We'll go ahead and fill those in with a heavy application of the graphite, leaving a couple of areas for highlights. The mane of the horse is also very dark, so we can go ahead and apply heavy pressure here as well. We'll pull strokes outward just as the hair grows. We'll allow these marks to taper at the end, creating the illusion of natural looking hair. Of course, we have sharpened the graphite pencil to do so. In this drawing, we've started by addressing the value by starting in the upper left-hand portion of the drawing. This will allow us to move freely from the upper left-hand portion to the lower right-hand portion gradually. This is because I am right-handed, and I'm conscious of the fact that the palm of my hand may smear the graphite. I could place a piece of paper or a paper towel underneath the palm of my hand to prevent any smearing. But in these early stages of the drawing, if I'm just conscious of working from left to right, I don't have to worry about placing that paper towel or piece of paper at this point in the drawing. As we add the value and develop the tone within the image, we're conscious of the form of each section of the horse. We want to make sure that our strokes flow over the cross contours or the form of each section. Of course, this means that our strokes will change direction depending on what section of the horse we're addressing. You can see here that for the head of the horse, most of the strokes are flowing downward. You can also notice that there's quite a variety of value here as well. We initially applied a lighter value and progressively we can get darker with our applications. This, of course, increases the range of value, meaning that we have dark darks, light lights, and midtones in between. It also increases the contrast, both of which are essential to creating a drawing that's successful. We're adjusting the pressure placed on the pencil to produce the gradations or slow changes in value from one section to the next. Of course, you can also use a blending stop to affect these gradations as well. For this drawing, however, I'm not going to use a blending stop, but rely solely on the pressure placed on the pencil to accomplish this. Of course, the surface that you choose to work on will affect your decision here. In this case, we're working on smooth bristle paper. 
this paper does still have a visible tooth, meaning that we can still see the texture of the paper even with super light applications made with the graphite pencil. If you're looking for a smoother look to your drawing, then a blending stop may be the way to go. As we continue developing the tones and value on the chest of the horse, we can see that a long cast shadow exists underneath the head. This long cast shadow is produced by a strong light source, the sun, which is directly above and slightly left of the subject. We'll continue building up darker tones after our initial applications that are medium to light. This gradual development of value slowly brings out the muscles in the chest of the horse. We'll continue working down the front left leg of the horse, again paying special attention to the changes in tone and value. And here again, the directional strokes that are made with the pencil are determined by the cross contours or the form of the individual section. In this case, most of the strokes flow along the same form or contour as the leg. These directional strokes change direction as the leg bends. The furthermost leg is mostly in shadow, so we can go ahead and fill it in with a heavy application of graphite. However, near the base of the leg, there are a few pieces of dirt that are flying up over the top of the dark portions of the leg. We'll leave spaces for these. At the bottom portion of the leg, the value gets much lighter since the color of the horse also changes here. In this case, the horse is running in dirt, and the action of the motion of the horse is causing some of the dirt to fly up, so it makes sense to include a bit of it in the drawing. In this case, we'll add a few marks with a variety of different values to indicate this action. We'll come back and finish this portion later when we complete the cast shadow underneath the horse. Now we'll continue working our way to the right side of the horse. At this point, we're adding a bit of the mane that is visible on the back of the horse. Then we'll work our way down to the side of the body of the horse. Here again, we'll start with light applications and progressively get darker. By gradually building up darker applications, we create a smoother gradation of tone and value. It's these subtle changes in tone and value which lead to the illusion of the muscles underneath the skin of the horse. Here again, we're considering the directional strokes that are made. In this case, the strokes predominantly flow around the form of the horse in a semicircular motion. If you're unsure of the directional strokes that should be used to add the value and tone, you can always use small circles to create a smooth gradation of value from one section to the next. This technique is sometimes called circling. Now, circling doesn't necessarily mean that you're creating small circles. It simply means that you're rotating your pencil in a circular motion as you're applying pressure to it. If done correctly, the gradation or change from one tone to the next will be nearly seamless. We'll work our way down on our third leg, just as we have in the other sections, starting with lighter applications progressively getting darker as we go. This leg, as our last, also ends with an area of lighter tone at the bottom. Here on the rear portion of the horse, we can clearly see the change in the directional strokes as we apply the graphite. Here again, a light application is applied initially. Then we can progressively get darker with our applications over the top. I'll remind you at this stage, we're still working with the HB graphite. You can see that even with just the HB graphite, we're still able to accomplish a fairly large range of value. Now, just underneath the back leg, we have an additional area of dark cast shadow. We'll address this with a heavier application. And when we do so, we see that we need to make the tones on the rear portion just a slight bit darker so that we can go over the top of that entire area before working our way down the last and final leg. As you may already know, graphite is inherently a shiny medium, unlike charcoal. Some people are turned off from using graphite entirely because of this reason. However, we can prevent graphite shine to a certain degree. Graphite shine is accentuated when the tooth of the paper is essentially eradicated. The tooth of the paper refers to the texture of the paper. It's what actually receives the material that we're working with. 
If we place a heavy amount of pressure on the pencil, we're basically flattening the tooth, and that increases the shine. But if we slowly and progressively apply the graphite like we have in this drawing, we can minimize the amount of shine produced by the graphite because the tooth of the paper is minimally disturbed. And speaking of heavy applications, now we're ready to move on to the tail of the horse. And just like the mane, we'll address the tail in the same way, creating strong, deliberate marks extending outward just as the hair grows. Here again, these strokes will taper as they extend out from the body of the horse. And there also should be some variety here as well. Now we'll revisit that area of cast shadow. Now in this case, we could address all of the dirt that's underneath the horse. But in this case, I don't want to distract from the drawing of the horse. I want the focus to be on the horse. But the cast shadow is equally as important. So we'll include only the area of cast shadow. We'll also include a bit of texture here as well by creating a bit of variety in the mark and the value, and we'll add a few more pieces of dirt flying up underneath the motion of the horse. We can now clean up the edges of our drawing using a vinyl eraser. In this case, I'm using an eraser that's encased in a wooden shaft. These are sometimes referred to as erase soles or eraser pencils. And I also noticed that the long cast shadow underneath the head of the horse seems a bit too long for my liking. So using a kneaded eraser, I'll gently lift up some of the value at the bottom portion and clean up the value after I've erased it. This makes the shadow appear much more natural and it's time to start darkening up some of the values. I've now switched over to a 2B lead inside of the mechanical pencil. This lead is of course a little bit softer than the HB pencil, producing a slightly darker mark. We'll go in in selected areas, increasing the strength of the shadow. This, of course, enhances the range of value and also increases the contrast in the image, making the light source appear a bit stronger and making the form a bit more believable. And now that we've patiently applied graphite applications to build up the tone and value, our graphite drawing of a horse is now complete. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to the channel. And if you're ready to learn even more about drawing and painting, then check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes video courses, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, and much, much more. Just click on the link to learn more. Thank you so much for watching.